Since the very first reading recommendations made their way into courses, learners have been looking for ways to avoid reading the recommended books. Sorry, it's true. Some of us do fastidiously read books cover to cover, but many folks simply don't have the time or don't want to. So we saw the rise of cliff notes, then blogs dedicated to book summaries, and more recently a range of apps all promising the same thing. The key benefits of reading the book without the effort. In this video, I'm comparing the two that I personally pay for, Get Abstract and Blinkist. I'll look at which one's best and how we can utilize these platforms in our content strategies. Hey, my name's Tom and I'm the Chief Learning Geek at Evolve Learning Design. I've worked in the learning and performance industry for the last decade and if you find this video or anything else on the channel helpful, please do consider subscribing to the channel and giving this video a like. Both of those really help me out. Now, book summary apps are a bit of a Marmite subject. Some love them and others, well, not so much. Personally, my opinion has changed a lot over the last couple of years. Whilst they may not be my personal preference, they are undeniably useful for many, especially when it comes to workplace learning. Now, it would be easy to assume that given that all these apps and platforms broadly do the same thing, that they're all exactly the same on the inside. But the art of summarizing a book or paper just isn't that simple. To compare probably the two biggest players in the space right now, Get Abstract and Blinkist, I've chosen one book, Brilliance by Design. A fantastic book, by the way, if you haven't read it, there is a link to the Amazon page for the book and the author's page in the description of this video. I'll be listening to and reading both summaries, comparing, contrasting what I think of the format and what I got from them, and I'll also take a look at the overall user experience on the platforms. For fairly obvious copyright reasons, I won't be showing or playing the summaries on the screen. If you want to take a look for yourself, there are links to both apps in the video description and both offer some kind of free trial. Right, let's get started. The Get Abstract summary starts with a rating and listed qualities of the summary. Now, this really confused me because in the app, there is no way to find out what these mean. On the desktop, it turns out you can hover over them, it reveals a little pop-up and tells you what they are, but to be honest, it's information I just don't need as an end user. I could see it being valuable from a content curation perspective, so maybe showing it on like a back-end dashboard if this was like a corporate account, but for me personally, it, information just didn't need to be there. There are, however, some other really good options here. I can bookmark, like, download, and share the summary, all using basic intuitive icons. Really like that. There are also language controls, English, Spanish, and Chinese for this book. Those three seem to be pretty consistent across the library. Uh, there are also text size and color options and brightness controls. I really liked having all this right there on the content page. Uh, and all in all, it creates an effective and pretty accessible experience. Next up is a recommendation. Now, this seems to act as sort of like a, a blurb created by the summary writer stating the intent of the work. Work. And this is followed by key takeaways. Um, this seems to expand on what's in the blurb, but not actually pull out the detail of the book. Now, all in all, this takes about a minute to read and does an excellent job of detailing exactly what the book covers and what you're likely to get from the summary. It also includes short quotes along with the editorial material, which do help bring the author's voice in at this early stage. Now, from here, we're finally into what we might call the, the main body of the summary. The summary is laid out in what you might call like a blog style or an article style, just a straight piece of text running directly underneath the previous information on screen, underneath the audio player for the audio version. So you simply scroll down if you're on a phone or, well, scroll down if you're on a PC as well um, to move forwards in the text. Now, I'd describe the summary itself as academic. 
It addresses each key takeaway from the previous section uh, with short paragraphs and bullet points. It also includes sort of short quotes to maintain the original author's voice within the summary, which I thought was a really nice touch. Now, this approach does a great job of clearly detailing what the author suggested in terms of action and approach, but does lose some of the context provided in the original book. Now, at the end of the written summary, I was kind of prompted to share or leave a comment or review my highlights. This confused me slightly because there had been no previous mention of highlights, um, but it turns out what you can actually do is select text from the summary and then tell it to save the selected text as a highlight for that particular book or, or journal or podcast. I love this. The ability to kind of self-curate content and build up your own reference materials is something that is woefully underutilized in workplace learning. Great to see it here in the app. It works on the desktop as well. What I'd be really interested to see in the future is what if there was an option for me to be able to sort of take those off platform with me? What can I do with them? Can I turn them into flip cards or, or check sheets? Can I, you know, use them to quiz other people? Can I send my highlights to others on the platform that would be phenomenal now the app also provides a set of suggestions at the end of the summary including books articles and podcasts all available on the get abstract platform I found the recommendations to be pretty spot on. All of them were relevant, um, but the thing that I was especially pleased to see was the fact that there were related articles picked out, not just small books. It hadn't just attached itself to the idea that I've reviewed one book, so I want to review more books. Um, this was particularly interesting because it meant it was picking out papers that were relevant, but were not about the same subject really fascinating that they've managed to clearly do a great job of tagging their content. Now, I needed about 15 minutes to read this full summary, including the takeaway and recommendation sections of the page. The summary did a great job of hitting all the key points from the book and certainly focused on practical application, which is definitely where I'd want the focus of a summary to be if I was going to use it as part of a, a workplace learning recommended read. Now, I do feel that the loss of some context reduced the impact of the piece. But to be fair, the art of summarising an entire book into 15 minutes is inherently a process of removal. And I'm pretty confident that the summary provides everything you would want a learner to take away from this in a workplace learning context. Finally, let's talk audio. For me, this was a disaster. The audio followed the summary, fine, but for some reason utilised two voiceover artists rather than one, changing every time we went past a key point or a paragraph. I found it incredibly difficult to pay attention to, to track, to follow. I got lost several times. I got really caught up in who's speaking now and why and why are there two speakers. Now, I would only ever really utilize a second speaker if I was simulating a conversation, and that's not what any of this was. For me, it was just distracting. I also think that the kind of academic or almost brutally efficient summary works better on paper than it does in audio. On paper, it felt, you know, fine-tuned and efficient. Recorded, it didn't really feel human. For this to work, I'd likely rewrite a slightly less formal and efficient version of the summary and you know, add in some more prose and use a single speaker. Overall though, not bad at all. I would probably stick with the written summary in this example and avoid the audio, but that is based on my preference. Now, let's take a look at Blinkist. Loading the same book in Blinkist, I can see straight away that not all summaries are the same. There's a time listed at the top, 29 minutes, as well as a key ideas counter, seven in this case. Here we have fewer options though. We have bookmarking and we have share in a Blinkist space, which is a bit like a communal bookshelf. The lack of accessibility options is disappointing as well as having no language options here. Now, I later found that these were in like the main settings menu, but I'd really like to see them available on the main content screen. That's where they're needed. 
From there, the first section is a what is it about section. It's a short blurb and does a great job of outlining what the book is about. This is directly followed by a who is it for section, and I was really pleased to see this. It's a bulleted list of those who will find this work interesting or relevant. The inclusion of this is fantastic, I think, from a workplace learning perspective, where it's either going to validate a recommendation, or if people are self-directing, give someone a clear understanding of whether or not this particular topic might broadly be relevant to them, but how is it being covered? The fact that this book is talking about teaching does not mean it's relevant to teachers. It could be relevant to students who are being taught, or parents who want to understand what is being taught and how. So having this section, fantastic addition, love it. From here, we're into the summary, or as this platform refers to them, the blinks. Here we have seven main blinks, if you will, and an introduction and a conclusion. I quite like this kind of breaking up of content, um, but it'll be interesting to see kind of how well it's carried through. Rather than one long blog style page, as we saw in Get Abstract, the blinks are separated into specific pages accessed from a menu. Now, I like this more organized approach despite the increased interaction cost. This addresses the real world challenge faced by L&D our learners get distracted and get interrupted. Whether it's a customer or whether it's a colleague or a manager or just day-to-day -day duties, stuff comes up. Being able to come back to this and very easily find your place or go back to the same point is a real, real benefit. Now, each blink is written very informally and in full prose. There's really minimal use of bullet points and lists with a greater focus given to providing a consistent narrative through the blinks. This more personal almost approach will, I think, be more engaging with a less expert audience, but does lack the efficiency that we saw in the Get Abstract summary. Now, on these pages, I did have the option to switch between light and dark mode and adjust the text size. So I am pleased to see some of those accessibility related controls coming back into the content screen. Again, I would still have liked to have seen them, you know, at, at, at this very start of the content rather than on the individual pages. But this is better than just having them in the main settings without a shadow of a doubt. Now, once again, the summary did a good job of covering all the key content from the book, um, though in a very different format. The lack of bullet points and list made this summary much harder to scan, but did create a more cohesive overall experience. I wonder slightly if the use of the menu system is helping to break up the blinks to allow for that reduced scannability of the content itself. Now, I don't think it quite gets there, and I'll discuss why in a moment, but I don't think it's a total loss. The full read took me just over 40 minutes, though I am a slow reader, so this broadly tracks with my expectation. This is noticeably longer than it took me to read the Get Abstract summary though, and that's largely due to the style that's been used. I rely heavily on being able to scan text and anchor my reading, techniques used by many dyslexic readers. I struggle to do this with the Blinkist text due to the lack of bullets and generous use of extended paragraphs. Important to note here that this is a specific need and way of reading, so your mileage may vary. Now, let's talk about audio. This really is a game of two halves, because the Blinkist audio is fantastic. A consistent speaker using a casual tone matching the tone of the writing is just perfect for this format. It feels like the written content was actually secondary to the audio, which in many ways makes perfect sense. When you look at a lot of the marketing for Blinkist, it focuses very heavily on the idea of listening and a podcast-esque experience. For me, perfect if audio is going to be your main value driver. Now, when considering using one of these apps, it's worth thinking about what you get for your money. 
Get Abstract is the slightly more expensive option at $24.90 per month or $20.80 per month if you pay annually. They also offer team memberships and enterprise pricing and you can see all that on their website. For your membership, you get access to a library of more than 25,000 summaries of books, articles and podcasts. Now this is one of the largest libraries like this that I've seen and the inclusion of articles is especially interesting as academic articles are some of the most difficult things to read. This makes summaries especially handy in the workplace learning context where a book might get read but a research paper will almost certainly not. Now Blinkist on the other hand is just $9.99 a month or $4.99 a month if you pay annually. Again enterprise pricing and all that kind of thing you can contact them if you're interested. Now this includes a smaller library of just over five and a half thousand books plus insights from podcasts. Though the library is smaller I found it to be reasonably well rounded. The biggest gap here is the inclusion of articles though, so if that's a deal breaker you may need to look towards Get Abstract. So Get Abstract or Blinkist, which one will it be? Well as is always the case, I would suggest that there is no one option here that will suit everyone. You might remember that at the start of the video I mentioned that I pay for both of these services and that's not going to change. If you're looking for a large library covering books, podcasts and articles and will primarily be using the written summaries then I'd recommend Get Abstract. I also think this option is more suitable for an expert audience. On the flip side, if you're primarily looking to use the audio summaries, focus on best-selling book titles and have less experienced or non-expert audience members, then Blinkist summaries will be ideal. From a user experience perspective, both apps work well and have a good range of options and controls with Get Abstract edging ever so slightly ahead in terms of accessibility settings and UI design and language options, but there's really not much in it. How can we use these platforms in our content strategies? Well, the simplest way is including recommendations to summaries rather than full books in existing content. Whether it's a recommendation page at the end of an e-learning module or an inline recommendation in a facilitated session, just guide them towards the content rather than towards the original book or present both so that the user has some options. Next up, you can include summaries within the syllabus itself. Assuming that the organisation is providing access to these applications and that the apps are integrated with the LMS, something that both Blinkist and Get Abstract do offer, this can help you leverage external content within your learning plans. A curation-led approach will massively reduce the content creation workload placed on you and your team. Finally, Offering a collection of curated summaries on your learning platform can provide a low effort, self-directed development opportunity for your audience. In this instance, you're not only providing development content, but also helping to push a development focused learning culture. I hope you found this comparison helpful. If you use a summary tool, whether it's one of these two or something else, let me know in the comments along with maybe how or if you would use them in a workplace learning context. If you'd like to try either of the apps explored in this video, there are links to both in the video description.